Welcome to our discussion on the conditional and a teeny tiny bit on circuits. So the things we want to cover here are conditionals, how to find the negation of a conditional, and then just, like I said, a little on circuits. First of all, what is a conditional? A conditional is an if-then statement. Um, written mathematically in symbols, it's P with this little arrow and then Q, and that just translates simply as if P then Q or P implies Q. We say P is the antecedent and Q is the consequent. You can think of it, consequent is like the mathematical version of consequence, you know, something that comes from a certain action. So it makes sense that Q is the thing that comes from P happening, right? If P, then Q, right? If you break the law, then you go to jail. That's the consequence kind of thing. Well, of course, if you get caught and get convicted, but you get the idea. All right, we can uh, make a truth table for the conditional and figure out when these thing, when this conditional is true or false, right? So we set up our normal uh, P's and Q's, right? And T's and F's for all the various cases of when one is true and the other one is false, vice versa, when they're both true and all that kind of stuff, right? So here's our four, four different pairings. And you can see that the conditional is always true except for this case here. So it's only false if the first part is true and the second part is false. That's kind of nice because it makes it kind of easy to remember that a conditional is only false if the first part is true and the second part is false. Basically, if the first thing happens and then the second thing doesn't, then the conditional is false, right? So think of it in terms of something really simple. So you make a simple claim of, uh, if I eat this burger, then I will feel full, right? So P is eating the burger, Q is feeling full. So if it's true that you eat the burger and it's true that you feel full, then the statement, if I eat the burger, then I'll feel full is true. Okay, if it's true, right? You ate the burger, but you don't feel full, right? Then the statement falls apart. It's not true. What does this one represent? Well, this re represents you didn't eat the burger and yet you still feel full, right? Because not, you know, F is false and, and, and Q is true. So how is that still true? Well, the whole if then thing says if this happens, then this other thing happens. And if the first part doesn't happen, then you can't test the second part, right? So that's why it's still considered true. And this one says, well, I didn't eat the burger and I didn't feel uh, full. So the statement still holds up. It's kind of like innocent until proven guilty. And this is the, the part, you know, that basically proves it guilty because you did eat the burger and you didn't feel full. So you can see how out of the four cases, that's the only one that results in the conditional being false. Okay. This is just discussing what we already talked about. It's the special characteristics of this conditional syst uh, statement of when it's true and false. Here's some simple examples. Remember that capital T always represents a true statement. Capital F always represents a false statement. So we're basically saying if the first statement is false and the second statement is obvious, or sorry, if the first statement is true and the second statement is obviously false, right? Because four is not less than two. Then that's that one case where the statement is false. And then here we have eight equals one, which is obviously false implying false right so we have false implies false and that's one of those things where hey well if you know if the if we didn't even test it then it's just assumed true and we just leave it as assumed true and that's why it's true okay a tautology is a fancy word for a statement that is always true the negation of a conditional can be written a few different ways but this is the most um common way. So if we want to take the negation of a conditional, it's P and not Q. And to see how that works, right, remember uh, a negation just means that uh, the truth table is the opposite. So if we put in uh, a not Q column, so we can, uh, you know, keep track of it, right? So when Q is true, this is obviously false, right? True false, true, it's just the opposite of those, right? And so now we can do the P and not Q, uh, put it together all in one. And so we're looking at P and not Q, right? So remember, an and is false uh, whenever either piece is false, right? So true, true gives us true, false, false gives us 
false and then false true sorry false true also gives us a false and you can see that this is the exact opposite of this ergo the negation okay so that's how we can prove something is a negation of something else what about if we want to see if something is equivalent remember two statements are equivalent just if they have um, identical um, truth tables so again all we have to do is check it uh, please be aware that they have a, a not p right an opposite of p uh, if you want you can you can even squeeze it in over here and just say well that's false false true true and now if we look at not p or q we're doing an or right and remember ors are true whenever either piece is true so we know the first two are true because true is here we know this one's true because there's a true there and then down in the last one we have a true and a false right so true oh what i mess up right i was looking at p and not p duh i'm supposed to look at uh not p and q so that's true double false makes it false right double true is true and then false true is true so there we go see how they're all the same all right equivalent <clears throat> Now, if we want to determine the negation of a statement, we can use the idea that we saw up here, right? The negation is the first piece and then the opposite, right, of the second piece. So let's write that down to remind ourselves. The negation of if then, right? So if you want to think about the negation of if then equals the first piece is true, right? So it's still P, and then the negation of the second piece. So if you ask him, so that you ask him is the P, right? Then he will come, that's Q, and then all dogs, P. So here's our, still our P. You ask him, and then here's our and, and then he will not come, right? So there's our squiggly Q. It is a dog, and it does not love bones, right? So, and I know there's no if then here, but it's, you know, all do it's all dogs love bones. It's kind of like, if it's a dog, then it loves bones, right? All dogs love bones basically means if it's a dog, it must love bones. So there's our, our P and our Q. So... If it's a dog, this piece here, that's still our P, and then here's my and, and then it does not love bones. There's my negation of Q. So the second one was a little tricky. We have to remember that when we have um, those, uh, we can even think of it as tautology words, right? Um, complete words, all things, right? Every, all, every, those types of things. So whenever we have something that implies um, a complete set, that's the same thing, or it can be the same thing as an if. All right, now we're just going to briefly talk about circuits because they're uh, very confusing for most, and um, we're not going to see a lot of these in future stuff. So don't worry too much if this confuses the heck out of you. But logic can be used to design electrical circuits. So here's what's called a series circuit, right? They're in a line. So P has to be closed and Q has to be closed for the whole circuit to be closed. Here's a parallel circuit where only P or only Q or both can be closed and then the circuit's complete, right? Because electricity could come here and travel along the top if P was closed. But if P was open and Q was closed, it could travel along the bottom. And if they were both closed, then it could travel either way. And so you can think of it as, you can think of it as flowing water too. That's how I always envision electricity. Okay, here are a bunch of equivalent statements that help us um, simplify circuits. Uh, just write them down and, and have them in your notes. There's no way you're going to have these memorized. Uh, some of these we've already seen. This is that equivalent one that we had for the conditional, right? But uh, don't worry about it. All right, some other equivalent statements used to simplify circuits. So if T represents, again, a true, and F, again, represents a false, then we know P or true is equivalent to true. P 
p and false is equivalent to false because no matter what p is, right, if p is true or false, remember an or is always true if at least one of the pieces is true. So whatever we put with, with a t, with a true, when it's an or, it'll always be true. And remember, ands are only true when both pieces are true, and they're false if one or more pieces are false. So as long as we have a false piece here, it doesn't matter what p is. If it's true or false, it's the whole thing is still going to be false. And then this is kind of the same idea. So whatever p is, not p is the opposite. And remember, an or is true if either of the two things are true. So regardless of what p is, this is the opposite. So if this is true, this is false, and one of them is true, and we're good. If this is false, and this is true, and one of them is true, and we're good. And the same thing happens here, that because these are opposite signs, we always have a true and a false, or a false and a true. And when we have an and, remember, if either piece is false, the whole thing is false. So it's just kind of simplifying a couple things. And then the last thing we want to talk about is a real quick example, is that we can draw a circuit for if P, then Q or not R. And we know that equiv the, the equivalence, you may recall, you may not. We just uh, talked about this uh, earlier, that we know the equivalence of conditionals and we can change it into an OR statement, right? So we can take this conditional and change it into an OR statement. And if you go back to a previous slide here, here's the conditional. P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q. And remember, we saw that earlier um, as well in our slides. Conditional is equivalent to not P or Q. So here, right this is p implies something instead of just q it's a bunch of stuff but this this whole thing you can think of it as as one big q i don't want to use lowercase q to confuse you but it's just one whole thing and we know that p implies something is equivalent right three lines means equivalent two lines means equals three lines means equivalent so they're not exactly the same but they're equivalent because their truth tables are the same so this is equivalent to the opposite of the first thing right and then or the second thing. So it becomes an or, and the only thing that changes the first thing, it becomes its opposite. So that's what happens here, right? P goes to not P, we have an or, and then the, the remember the, the consequence, the consequent stays the same. So not P or this stuff. Well, it basically just means, you know, the circuit works if either of those things are true. So here's one side of the circuit, which is the first piece. And then here's the second side of the circuit. And because it's an and, they're in line, right? So uh, parallel circuits are ors. And <clears throat> in line circuits, right, or series circuits are ands. Because the only way, remember, the only way this piece here on its own is true is if both pieces are true, i.e. both things have to be closed. Okay, and so that's kind of the, the correlation between circuits and truth tables. Again, don't, don't stress out too much about the circuit stuff.